Yeah, so we've been getting out a little early recently. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. And so uh, instead of doing one sermon, we're going to start doing two sermons. Um, we feel like we're just, we got you here. We might as well try and just douse you with information. So we actually are going to have two sermons this morning. Uh, the first, I'm starting off uh, just a real quick kind of summary of uh, this series that we've been in, uh, where we've been just talking about uh, how Jesus interacted with people. And again, the purpose of that sermon was to try and, and get us thinking about the conversations that we have every day. Um, and in this idea that as image bearers, God is using us. We are his hands and feet. We are his, uh, his presence here in a way uh, to take his message to this lost and hurting world. Okay, so, so as we were trying to think through what this sermon series should look like, we were trying to draw on that. Um, and so I'm hoping, uh, these are some notes from uh, the last three sermons. Uh, Brandon also did a sermon where he talked a little more specifically about the interaction between the Pharisee and the tax collector. And uh, I had some personal notes on that. He didn't have any slides. And so I was trying to go through and pull out the points from my personal notes and it just didn't work. So, <laughs> but uh, if you want to go back and touch on that sermon, we have it online. Um, but as I'm kind of setting this up, I'd like for you to just be reminding yourself of these past few sermons. And I'm going to get just a couple of people to share something that stood out to them through the course of the series. Now, I only have like six to eight minutes to kind of wrap this up. And then James is going to come up and uh, do a, a little sermon this morning on giving. Uh, we've been talking about that a little bit more over the past few months as we've seen our budget uh, constrict a little bit. And, and really what we're seeing in the church as a whole, the capital C church across the world and, and nonprofits in general are really taking a, a hit right now in terms of, of uh, you know, income. And so we just wanted to remind the church body as they think about that part of their walk with God, because it is a very important part of the walk, of your walk, uh, that we just kind of talk through some of that. And James did a series, I don't know, it's probably four or five years ago now, uh, you know, and used a lot of the structure from his talk this morning. So I'm going to try and make as much room as possible for him uh, so that he can uh, get to that part of it. And then next week we'll be starting a new series, and we're going to spend the next 12 weeks uh, in Acts. And so we're going to take the course of the summer to talk through Acts. We actually invited Garrett Davis to come and kick that off for us next week. So uh, he'll be here and create the structure from that, and then uh, we'll continue to speak on that uh, through the summer. So yeah, so how Jesus interacted with people. Uh, again, I, I mentioned this idea that, uh, that the responsibility for this, you heard this morning in the songs that we sang. This is what we talk about as Christians. This is what we embrace. Uh, it's in our songs, it's in our prayers, it's in our sermons, it's in the Word. Because again, that's how God created it. That's how he intended for it to be, not for a few specific people to carry the message, to stand up in front of a group and, and speak some message that is supposed to cover that requirement. That's a, a very small percentage of it. And that's why we've talked about many times here in this body that the most important part of what we do as a body happens outside of this room. We don't ever want to get to a place where as a body we think that what we do here on Sunday mornings is the majority of what we do. Because that would, that would, um, that would make this a performance. That would make this something that it's just not. And so we have these talks, we give these reminders and this encouragement and challenge so that you can go and be empowered to do what you're called to do, a.k.a. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. This great commission that you yourself personally are called to. And so again, as, as you think about this, you need to be wrapping in your mind and having the Spirit, ask the Spirit to convict you of how you're doing with this. And, and for myself, there's days where I'm, I look back and I'm like, yeah, it was a good day. I, I feel like I, I seized those opportunities and did you know, what God called me to do. And then there's days where I look back and I'm like, oh gosh, I really messed that one up. 
And so there's some balance in there, right? We obviously want more of one than we do the other. But the call is the same. And the desire as a Christian should be the same within all of us. To go out and seek and save the lost as our Lord did and as he calls us to do. So again, I want to just give a couple of people, again, because I've got to move uh, pretty quickly, uh, an opportunity uh, to share from these points or maybe from something Brandon said or what I said in my first sermon. What stood out to you about this series? And let's, let's move this quickly. Nothing. All right, James, come on up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Um, he said just his interaction with people and not being afraid to offend people. And speaking as a people pleaser or somebody with a people pleaser personality, that can be really difficult. But I found uh, one of the things that helps me is to think about how much I love the person I'm talking to and working with and how those words are speaking the truth in love to try and bring people to a better place. So thank you. Somebody else. Yeah. 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 What a, what a neat, I, I get this imagery. Uh, we went to a conference many, many years ago up in uh, Colorado, uh, outside of Estes Park at the YMCA up there. And the speaker said, okay, here's what I want to do. And, they, and he took one person out of the audience and he took them outside where they couldn't hear what we were going to do. And, and he explained to the crowd of hundreds of people, he said, we're going to do like an applause of heaven type entrance for this person. And I want you to imagine this person coming into the, you know, coming into the presence of God and we're going to celebrate that. And there were hundreds of people cheering, and this person was walking in like, what the heck's going on? And once they heard that and understood that, they felt the power of that. And I just think of Jesus doing that with us on the big things and on the tiny things as well, these interactions that we have and how we love people and how powerful that is. Okay, one other person, and then we'll move on. Uh, where are you going to go, Brianna? Mm. Yeah, yeah, this idea of uh, Jesus allowing um, people to influence him. And what a profound, you know, point that was that Kristen shared that Sunday, just thinking through that and, and what that means for us, the implications of that. So, so there's a lot there, right? There's a lot of, of um, things uh, that we could kind of talk about and point out. And I want to kind of go back. Uh, let's see. I don't think this is working, Justin. So would you go to that next slide? Yeah, so I wanted to just uh, kind of review with you something that I had in my sermon as just a summary here and think about Jesus' interactions with people and him being on God's timeline. And so if you have your Bible with you and want to open up to Matthew 18, we're going to read the parable of the lost sheep. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the 99 that never went astray. This is one of those scriptures that, uh, and stories that we hear about the character of Christ that really kind of shakes us, right? In a lot of ways, it, I think it can leave a lot of questions, um, but just a few things to kind of point out here is that the love of God is an individual love. You know, that the 99 that were there weren't enough. He went after the one. He wanted them all. And there's this theme of this through the scripture, this idea that God wants all people everywhere to be saved. And it increases this reminder for us as disciples and this responsibility that we have to participate in that. In the next side, the love of God is a patient love. Uh, this is one I definitely struggle with. Remember I showed that video of the sheep getting pulled out of the ditch and he took like three steps and jumped back in. And that's all of us, right? That's a, definitely a mirror being held up to us. But it's also a good reminder for us as we think about the people that we're reaching out to and how long-suffering we're called to be. I've been reminded of that recently in a, in a relationship that I've had for a long time and just the, the challenge and the struggle wrapped up all, in all of that and trying to figure out what God is calling me to next in that. But we tend to be easily exasperated people and write people off quickly, but God doesn't do that, and this parable teaches us that. 
Uh, the next slide, the love of God is a seeking love. The shepherd wasn't content to wait for the sheep to come back. He went out searching for it. And again, just a highlight for us of our, um, of our responsibility and the eagerness that we should have to go out and live this out with people. Uh, the next slide, the love of God is a rejoicing love. Um, there wasn't any grudges or conditions. Uh, what we see in the response of the, the shepherd is rejoicing, pure joy over the idea of this one coming back into the fold, um, that the one that was lost had been found. And in a society where we make so much of numbers and efficiency and all that stuff, that God is talking about and focused on uh, the one. And then finally, the love of God is a protecting love. The shepherd seeks and then saves. Uh, this love makes the foolish wise and the weak strong and the sinner ultimately pure and blameless. And so, yeah, I just want you to kind of think about those things as we wrap up this series and think about those interactions. And hopefully you can take that and take that into uh, the interactions and the people that you uh, deal with and have friendship with uh, going in um, you know, going into work and family and just all those different places. So, uh, so that's a wrap on that series. Again, uh, James is going to come on up and, and uh, do a little talk on giving. And then next week we'll start into our Acts series. So thank you guys.